Hey everyone, before we get into the video, just a quick shout out to my friend Matthew Rhodes. He's got his book out, Virtual Requiem. You can buy it from Amazon. Link is in the description below. Go check it out. None of the proceeds come to me. Everything goes to him. I'm just doing a friend of solid. Right, on with the video. What's going on gamers? Chaos Lounge here. And today we're looking at the situation that's currently transpiring between Game Pass, its sustainability, and the fact that people are saying that Tango closing, I mean, clearly no one cares about uh, Austin, you know, Arcane Austin. No one cares about Roundhouse. No one cares about Alpha Dog. I mean, in, that in itself is disrespectful, right? You've got staff in Roundhouse. Obviously, they were absorbed, but no one really understands what absorbed means. It actually means that those staff were taken and placed into another studio. In this case, Zenimax Online Services. Uh, Alpha Dog was completely gone, so all of their stuff has been let go, but no one cares about that because no one ever talks about it. No one really cares about Arcane because of Redfall, so no one really cares about that either. The only one that people care about is Tango, and in the, that in itself is kind of disrespectful, right? You don't care about Arcane losing their jobs. You don't care about Alpha Dog losing their jobs. You don't care about the few people in Roundhouse who most likely lost their jobs because of the redundancies that are going to come in from duplicate jobs. None of that matters. So what you're saying is your anger is selective. So that in itself already completely just destroys your whole credibility on this case. But let's continue on this, right? Tango closing has other issues. With Nakamura and Ikumi leaving, they are the masterminds behind the evil within. They are the brains behind it. You literally took the brains out of the company and left the corpse to walk around. And that's what was left in that company. When you take the brains, the masterminds behind the games that you love, Evil Within and Hi-Fi Rush, they left. The people that created the concept, the idea, the story, the characters, they left. They're gone. What you're left with is the people that actually build the game. Now, them losing their jobs is also a bad thing. Like I said, when it comes to anyone losing their jobs, it's not good. Me being in the tech industry where I'm a, you know, I've, I've, there's a good chance that I could lose my job right now because work is slow. I've been there for 10, 13 years. It doesn't matter if the if it gets to that point, they would just tell me to leave like they told the last 200 people to leave from our company. We, we have, we're now running on like a skeleton crew. But it doesn't matter because all they care about is profits. And if the company or studio is not bringing the money in, they're just going to downsize until it's sustainable. But they're saying that Game Pass is the reason why Tango closed. And it is not. Because Tango, in well, Game Pass in itself is sustainable. Now, uh, Jez here says, you know, it's sustainable. People need to stop acting like 350 million guaranteed revenue, monthly revenue, isn't sustainable. Oh my god. Do people freak out about Fortnite being free to play? The industry is already in a post launch monetization state. I don't know why this is an episode. This whole episode was used to FUD Xbox Game Pass. Now, obviously, there's a little debate going on there. And I said they have repeatedly said Game Pass costs 1 billion to run. That's paid off in two, three months based on the 350 to 400 million per month. Now, I put this bracket here because I think Jez's numbers are slightly off and they were off, in fact. Uh, and I said the rest is profit, right? Obviously, uh, the game father is going to come in instantly. Uh, where are you getting this info from? Where are the drugs? I need them because I want to rage, right? And so I decided to break it down to him in layman term i said the 70 billion is a different cost that's not a game pass issue that's a microsoft issue microsoft is the one that paid for that for xbox's benefit and they wanted to see that return that's got nothing to do with game pass right nothing to do with game Pass. now if when call of duty arrives they say right we're gonna add an extra 500 million in terms of cost onto game pass game pass would still be profitable and this is where it gets interesting 
The question here was, is Game Pass sustainable as its own thing? The answer is yes, because doing simple maths really helps. Now, if we work this out based on Jez's numbers, 350 million by 12 months, that's actually 4.2 billion, right? Now, if we did it based on my 400 million per month, that is 4.8 million. Now, I'm basing this off of the 34 million Game Pass subs at a medium of $11. Now, obviously, some people are going to be on the $10 Game Pass. Some people are going to be on the Game Pass Gold, uh, Game Pass Ult. Some people are going to be on the Game Pass Ultimate. Some people are going to be on the PC Game Pass. So an $11 medium, I thought was just about right. Now, that's 4.8 billion. Now, if there's more people on Game Pass Ultimate, this 4.8 is going to go up quite a bit. But I'm being conservative here. Now, I also haven't included the 10 million Game Pass core players because that's really not a number that influences Game Pass. That's basically Xbox Live. And those numbers don't really attribute to the growth of Game Pass. If we were talking about those figures, this 34 million would pretty much be 45 million. But just like Sarah Bond said during the business update, 34 million players will have access to Diablo, which means it's not including the 10, 11 million that is on Game Pass Core. I mean, it's 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 pretty basic information. I know Tom Warren decided that he's going to go get that response. And if you read the response that the Microsoft PR said, Tom pretty much just twisted it into his own words. Well, he took it, interpreted it in his own way, and then decided to report on it. But if you just read what she said, she said there are 34 million Game Pass subscribers. Game Pass Core is different. It's a different entity. It's a different beast. She did then additionally add Game Pass Core members are exempt. That wasn't part of the situ uh, 34 million. And the way I read it and the way normal people would read that is that that 10 million is separate. So I'm going to keep that away. But even though, even so, the actual value of that 10 million, if everyone is paying for it in one lump sum at $60, 60 pounds, I know there's tax in the US as well, but let's just keep it simple, is around 600 million. So we're actually looking quite a bit of money there, right? So we're looking at 4.8 uh, billion. It's actually 4.88, uh, but anyway. So we continue along here. So it's higher, but core shouldn't be included in this as it's a separate beast. If I don't exclude it, you will most likely tell me, so let's skip that point. So you are still getting money, 9 million subs more. Last time I checked, even based on old figures, all bid number, all numbers in billions, 4.2. And this is the thing here, right, chat? I need people to... Look, I'm hoping basic maths is something we all get, right? Because clearly these ponies do not. But 4.2 million minus 1 billion leaves you with 3.2 billion. Now, if the cost of the actual overall game, uh, game Pass is 1 billion, that means after you've paid your costs... So your revenue is 4.2 billion. Your costs to run Game Pass is 1 billion. When you have your revenue minus your costs, you're left with net profit. So net profit here is 3.2 billion. Now, if we're doing it from the numbers that I used, the 400 million, you got 4.8 billion as total revenue. You got 1 billion as cost. You're left with 3.8 net profit billion dollars now i even went further and said let's say it goes up to two billion because i was thinking call of duty right they're gonna have to subsidize that cost because at the end of the day people might not be buying it so if seeing as it is going into game pass that's gonna add like a bit of uh cost onto the upkeep of game pass even though it's not actually adding anything financial it's gonna see a loss in potential sales but we're gonna see that in game pass so, based on the current numbers now, so I'm not even looking at the number of Game Pass subscriptions it's going to bring in. This is just looking at what it potentially could do and taking those potential factors in to the current numbers we have now. So we've got 4.2 billion minus 2 billion. It leaves you with 2.2 billion net profit. You've got 4.8 billion, which is my numbers minus 2 billion that still leaves you 
with a 2.8 billion profit, which is still pretty healthy, but I'm told 2.8 billion profit is not good. People that are people are crazy. Now, these are obviously my links. I'll leave this tweet in the description below for people to see. There is nothing here saying that Game Pass is not sustainable. Obviously, now people are saying that the articles that have posted this information are completely false and they're lying. Apparently, uh, IGN is now liars, Eurogamer is liars, uh, Metro is liars, Tech Radar is liars, GameSpot is liars. You know, every single one, Game Rant, everyone are liars because it doesn't suit their narrative. It doesn't go with the narrative that they set because Tango was closed down. No one cares about Arcane Austin, of course. No one cares about Alpha Dog. No one cares about Roundhouse. Poor guys. They, they, no one cares about those. They can just piss off. I mean, this is the state of the me, you know, of of the community right now out there. It's all fake outrage. And here's the, the best part, right? I'm actually seeing now people are upvoting. You know, they're review bombing, but they're upvoting Hi-Fi Rush. Now, here's my question, right? When Hi-Fi Rush came out, these ponies they they shut on the game they went and review bombed the game they were leaving negative reviews because it's not on their playstation they were doing you know buying the game just to leave a review and then refunding it on steam they were doing all sorts so please tell me when you're doing fucked up shit like this what right do you have as a piece of shit to complain now that tango is gone people are blaming microsoft and then you know i still think it came from top level but whatever it came from if you do not think for a split second that the community had a part to play in this you are sorely mistaken you see all these idiots review bombing starfield and if starfield didn't sell the way it did phenomenally it may have been in the same boat but thank god it did but on PC, it didn't sell that great. On PlayStation, no one bought it. And on play Xbox, the majority of the players from that 4 million, 5 million were on Game Pass. You're paying for it by a subscription, but it's not selling games. But that is all subsidized within that cost of that $1 billion or $1.5 billion or even mystical $2 billion that I'm talking about. But at the end of the day, if you are going out there and review bombing a game, going to the Xbox dashboard to get the game, review bomb it and give it a negative score after playing it on Game Pass, just so you can get your kicks and wins. And then the game decides, you know, and then the studio gets shut down because the game in the company's eyes wasn't successful or the masterminds that left the studio and left the company stranded and a former shell of what it was i.e. Shinji Mikami and Ikumi. What right do you have to complain now? Don't go out there and start upvoting a game after the studio's gone. You should be doing that shit when it comes out. But your console warring ways, your pathetic ways, are part of the reason why this shit has happened. You need to take responsibility for your actions. So don't start crying that Tango is closed. Don't start crying about Redfall developer Arkane Austin being closed. Even after the game was fixed, and it is fixed, right now that game is fixed. You guys made every attempt and effort to make sure that that game got shut on, destroyed, ridiculed, just like you did for Forspoken, which is a good game. But you made sure you shut down that studio by making sure no one went out and bought it. Because guess what? Perception, word of mouth, is a great tool. So the next time you want to go and review bomb a game, the next time you want to go and badmouth a game for the sole reason that it isn't on your platform of choice, think again. And don't come crying to social media the next time it does happen because you, my friends, are the problem. Everyone that played it on Xbox, they either liked it or it wasn't for them. They didn't go out review bombing it. On PC, they didn't go out review bombing it. But you ponies, you made it your life's ambition to make sure that this shit happened. 
And now that it has come to transpire, you're trying to blame it on Game Pass? You're trying to blame it on Phil? You're trying to blame it on anyone else? How about looking in the mirror and taking some responsibility and looking at the actions you did to make this happen? That's my thoughts on this, folks. You let me know what you think in the comment section below. You may agree with me. You may not agree with me. It's up to you. But I'd love to have that discussion in the comment section below and hear your thoughts. Because at the end of the day, actions have consequences. But the reality is, is Game Pass sustainable? Based on the numbers you're seeing on screen right now, yes, they are. And there is no reason to assume that Game Pass isn't sustainable. And even with the added COD effect that I've actually included here, and let's be realistic, COD will increase Game Pass subscriptions. It should, in theory, move the needle. So we're looking at 4.8 billion. That could be 6 billion by the end of uh, the year in terms of revenue gain from Game Pass or more. But I'm going to be conservative again here and just add an extra 1.2 billion, right? To that total number. We are still looking at over 4 billion net profit. How is that not sustainable per year? I mean, they can give me 0.1% of that and I would be set for life. Anyway, that's it. Let me know what you think in the conversation below. Let's have that discussion and I'll see you in the next one. Remain legend.